A while ago I did a Fallout 4 challenge run to beat the game only using explosives, and the video recently got some decent views, and in getting more attention people pointed out that the run was pretty bare bones and there were some strategies I could have used to make it easier on myself. So today we're diving back into the wasteland once again to beat the game with only explosives. And this time, oh I have some tricks up my sleeve. Also, I decided to start streaming, so when I do challenge runs to show the steps taken and how to pull off some of these tricks. If you'd like to tune into the next stream, check the description for the link and I'll see you there. But enough of the intro, let's get into the video. Pretty standard beginning for any Fallout game, I make an abomination of a character and then allocate my okay, stats. Okay, now, here's the logic behind this. So basically, we don't need strength at all. Strength goes into like throne stuff like that but because it's an explosion it doesn't really matter however what we need to do is we need to go luck up to five because luck at five gives us the idiot savant perk so in case you don't know idiot savant gives you a chance to while you're doing literally anything uh, you have a chance to get triple xp and that goes uh, up and up and up so you can get times 5 XP at level 11 when you get the second version of it. And then sometimes you can get the 3 times XP, but for just a certain duration of time instead of per action. So sometimes if you're lucky, you can actually get this to queue up on uh, quest earning. So you can get times 3 quest XP, which is like insane. Sometimes it's a couple levels. Um, intelligence, we're actually going to leave it at 1 because the idiot savant perk prefers you to have lower intelligence. The lower your intelligence, the more likely it is to work. So for a lot of the early game, especially with the strat I'm gonna do to like power level in the beginning, uh, I want that to be as low as possible. Plus intelligence doesn't do absolutely anything for us later down the path. Um, we can also do, sorry, we can also do a five in perception because that'll give us the ability to do the uh, demolition and experts that, mixed with the Idiot Savant perk, is essentially all we're looking for. Um, now, if we want, uh, I guess we could go with a couple of these other ones just to kind of level them. But again, we're going to leave Intelligence as low. And then, because we're probably going to be buying a lot of things, I'll probably go with a 5 on Charisma. Just so we can actually, like, actually, you know what? I forgot. You can talk your way out of pretty much anything in this game. So we're actually probably going to go with a 10. Uh, it is what it is, like, but essentially for the run, we just need luck, endurance, and, I mean, luck, charisma, and perception is, like, the main stats. Like, honest to God, if we just wanted to go strength, endurance, and agility, we could probably do that. Strength allows us to carry a little bit more, uh, endurance is a little bit more health, so maybe we just go more endurance, actually. Uh, I don't think we need to do... Oh, actually, I lied. We actually do need to do a little bit of points into agility. Uh, simply for the fact that, um... We're going to get to a point where we're gonna have to sneak. And to get uh, infinite fusion cores, we're gonna need that. So, we'll, we'll go with a 5 in that. Everything else should be okay. We don't really need perception, so we'll go back with endurance. Yeah, I'm okay with these. This is what I was thinking at the beginning, but this logic does change later. I proceeded through the rest of the intro and watched a nuke go off, and then my wife got assassinated. But after getting free and trapping some rad roaches in a room, I made it back to my neighborhood and had Codsworth clear out some enemies. Next was the quick level boost to actually start the run. I disassembled pretty much everything I could and started building wooden poles to give me tons of XP. So at this point I had already messed up my strategy and had to put a ton of early points back into perception to get the demolition expert perk. I don't know how I let this go since I even said out loud that I needed that stat, but since I could build tons of sticks it wasn't too far out of reach. I decided to run straight towards Diamond City to skip some early quests and basically became a fat homeless man with no way to defend myself. But I stopped by the Cambridge Police Station to progress the Brotherhood of Steel questline, only for this not to matter later. But we'll cross that hurdle when we get there. After making it to Diamond City, I stocked up on ordnance and found out that Nick Valentine was missing and decided to go chase him down. Now, at this point in the run, you may be thinking you've seen this all before. 
Now, trust me, it's very similar in the beginning, but we do some shenanigans in this run that honestly makes every run here on out laughably easy. After getting a level up, I finally got the Demolitions Expert perk at level 9, allowing the damage of explosives to increase. Before I left for Nick, I got involved in a standoff in town and watched a man get bing bonged. But right after, I went to the closest chem station and tried to build some bombs. But with no mats, it wasn't going to happen, so I was left to deal with whatever I could get from vendors. Getting back on track, I made my way to where Nick Valentine was being held, and with a mix of hurling bombs and running for my life, I made it to Nick Valentine and we started to make our way out of the hideout. Only issue was, Nick was taking forever to kill things, and I didn't have enough explosives to take out everyone. Just look at this. Look at him, he's just... Guys, shoot him! Please shoot him! We did eventually make it to the end of the hideout to have a face off with Skinny Malone and Darla, but after doing some master negotiations, I talked us out of the fight and we were able to just walk out. Except Nick had other plans and attacked them. What the fuck, Valentine? Oh my god, dude. Oh, oh my god. Dude, what are you- Oh my god, what have you done? After killing a whole lot of people that we didn't have to, Nick and I made it back to Diamond City and I tried to progress the main story. We talked for a bit and then decided to investigate Kellogg. But instead, I tried to skip some quest lines and went straight for Fort Hagen instead. Except, all I got was a ton of synths shooting at me and learning that this place was quest lock and I couldn't actually proceed. So it was back to Diamond City to break into Kellogg's house. And after finding out Kellogg was a purist when it came to cigars, I then traveled back to Fort Hagen only for all the synth friends to have been revived and ready to kill me all over again. What came next was a mad dash to the quest markers while throwing what ordinance I did have at anyone that got in the way. Looking back at this early bit into the run, I now realized I could have made this so much easier on myself, but it's not the destination, it's the journey that you guys come to see. After a slog of synths and explosions, I made it to Kellogg and instead of talking to him, just gave him some mines to hold for me while I took cover. Needless to say, the fight was over and after collecting some pieces of his brain for later inspection, it was time for me to leave. After making my way out of Fort Hagen, I finally saw the Prior didn't finally show up. Which was good for me, because now I had a way to gain infinite fusion cores. Only to find out that I wouldn't actually end up using this strategy due to finding a much, much easier way to power a set of power armor for years to come. Someone during my stream told me that Fallout 4 didn't have duplication glitches or infinite money glitches. And I'm about to show you why that is false. There's really nothing stopping me from just doing it again. Uh, the biggest one that we're going to need a lot of anyway is the fertilizer, so we might as well. Uh, we need oil, and then we need uh, spring. Now, if you're watching this, you're probably like, Jesus Christ, what has this man been doing? Basically, the super obnoxious way of doing this... I'll also explain this gigantic catastrophe in front of me, but basically all of these pretty little items over here can effectively be duplicated and doubled instead of having to go find anything. So essentially all you have to do, and you could do this on console, you could do it on PC, you could do it on practically anything, it's nuts. But essentially, if you want an infinite supply of items, basically all you have to do is go to something that can be scrapped. So you can do it on items, you can do it on basically anything, but the easiest way to do it is with a like a raw form of an item basically once you get the uh, once you have it. And essentially, you're just going to hit scrap and store at the same time. Like, you want to hit scrap and then store almost immediately after, but hold whatever the store function is. And effectively, if you do it right, I didn't do it there, you actually get both menus come up at the exact same time. So if I hit scrap, it's going to scrap it, but also store it. So basically, effectively, I've just doubled it. So this time we're going to double that. 
see, we're gonna double this, double that. And effectively, like, I think I had like 12,000 adhesive when I pulled it out. So realistically, if we go back in, we'll have, uh, should be 24,000. We can basically make as many grenades as I possibly, because look, for aluminum, you only need two per grenade, and we have 6,000. So we can effectively just make, and they weigh almost nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, I don't know, 200 of them? Yep. Yep, so we're basically just gonna keep going. And at the same time, we're still gaining XP from this, so this is also another XP glitch. But the XP for this is actually insane. And originally I was going to sneak onto the Prairden and steal fusion cores out of Brotherhood's power suits, but I found another method using a conveyor belt, although the timing is a bit hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop all 16. It comes in a pack of 16, which is fantastic, right? So what I'm going to do is I need... Oh my god, that's how you do it? Okay. Effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it on this conveyor belt. And now what I have to do... Is I have to snatch it out. Oh, it only dupes one at a time? Okay, well, it did it, but... I thought it would duplicate the whole stack, it only duplicates one. Okay. Effectively, what we're doing is by doing the fusion core setup like this and snatching it out of the conveyor belt at the best possible time, it duplicates it because not only do you get it back, but the, uh, the conveyor belt also thinks that it's done it, so you get both. There used to be, upon doing research, there used to be a duplication glitch you could do with dog meat. Um, but it seems like they've actually patched that one out. There's nothing you can do about it. So I guess we just drop, tell you what, I'm going to drop one or how many did I drop? 15? Yeah, yeah, okay. And then I'm only going to do it with one for a bit because doing it with, okay, let's see if I can do it this time. No, it's really finicky. Uh, I don't want those 38 rounds. Hold on. Sure, just get rid of the whole box. I don't care. Yeah, it's it's really hard to do because normally what you're trying to do is you're trying to wait until... Nah, it didn't work. You're trying to wait until it goes just in the black. Um, but because of the way it's flipped, uh, it's actually a little bit harder to pull off, which is wild that I pulled it off first try for you guys. Now, I don't know how many fusion cores I'm going to need to have infinite power armor, but I'd like to think that 17's a good starting point. And now between these two exploits, I could finally make infinite grenades and infinite caps by selling said grenades and infinite fusion cores to power my armor through the power of duplication and technically infinite XP as well. Now it was time to progress the main story. I went to Concord and helped the Minutemen and got my power armor, and after checking my perks I was able to plan out a path to make sure I had everything for the future to make this run laughably easy. Plus if I ever needed an influx of fusion cores, I could go to Diamond City and just trade grenades for them. To further my questline with the Minutemen, I decided to help out some settlements and make the end of the game easier, and honestly even without having the power armor fully fixed or optimized correctly, this run was already proving to be MUCH easier than last time. I could literally stand still and let raiders attack me, throw a grenade down and watch the explosions, all while taking hardly any damage. After freeing enough settlements, I got the quest to retake the castle, which was essential for the endgame and having it this early was really going to save me some time later on. And after retaking said castle, it was time to head to Good Neighbor and continue the other questline, but not before getting a proper how do you do greeting. I went and spoke to Dr. Amari and we traveled through Kellogg's memories to learn about the course of teleportation, and now I had to go find Virgil in the Great Sea, a scientist running away from the Institute. But before I could do that, it was time to finish the setup and solidify the run and make it easier than it already was. 
We were gonna pimp out the power armor. Too. That way you're not locked into doing all the quests. Whoops, hold on. Okay, cool. That should be enough for what I need. So we're gonna craft. We're gonna go. We're gonna make this model B. Yep. Go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna add the explosive shielding paint. Uh, this I don't think matters. Yeah, none of that, honest to god, matters. We can add a headlamp, I guess. Headlamp ball boy? Aw, oh, but it needs fiber optics. Maybe we won't use that. That's okay. So then this one, we're gonna go model B. We're gonna go explosive shielding. Okay. This one, model B. Explosive shielding. What's even weirder is the fact that... Ooh, there's a different one here? Um, okay, where's the... Ah, oh, there it is. Sick. But if I just leave those there, we think we'll be fine. What does it take to get the armor or perk? Do we have to invest in strength? Yes, we have to get strength to at least a three. So that's a couple levels away. Not impossible, but a couple levels away. Do I want to do it now, or do I do it later? That's the thing. Because that would be four levels to just upgrade to the next version. Hold well, on, let's take a look at something. So, I can do armor, armor, armor. Yeah, wow, you need a absolute ton of stuff. Okay. But as far as the rads go, they're all the same. So... Maybe I'll just hang out with what I got for now? Yeah, I'll just hang out with what I got. So, we have... Cool, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this, go ahead and drop this, because that doesn't matter. And we have basically 300 frags, that should be fine. Go ahead and hop in this. Dope. Okay, we also have 25 fusion core still, which is fantastic. Now I headed out to find Virgil, but while walking, I want to explain something. I could have power leveled and got every perk needed to take the power armor all the way to the maximum. They could, but as you'll see for the rest of the video, it would have been massively overkill. I mean, I was just standing still and throwing grenades at my feet while a swarm of ghouls and a rad scorpion attacked, and I was taking so little damage it wasn't even funny. But after walking through the glowing sea, I made it to Virgil, and then he told me to hunt down a courser. And so I was off to go do just that. I traveled over to Green Tech Genetics and had to make my way through an entire swarm of gunners. And by make my way through, I meant more like throw grenades everywhere and just waltz on through. Even though I was being shot by everything, I was hardly losing health, and watching the AI scramble as grenades landed next to their feet was hilarious. The last time I did this quest, it was a matter of throw a grenade and run for my life, but now, since nothing could actually hurt me, this was a well-deserved breeze. And to make matters even easier, when I did finally get to the courser, I used a fat man to skip his fight entirely and grab my courser chip. After reporting back to Amari, I was told to go track down the railroad and have them decipher the courser chip, and the best part of doing this quest this way was since I had already allied myself with another faction and had done all other quests prior, I could just waltz in and get my chip scanned, and then leave with no strings attached. Once that was done, I reported back to Sanctuary and gave the now discovered plans for a teleporter to the Minutemen and started construction. And surprisingly, I had everything but one item so I had to go scour through a hospital to find the last piece. Once I was back with the piece, the teleporter was built and I was now inside the institute. Now, because I was trying to save time, I decided I would force a certain conversation with Father. Come on! Oh, I guess I should have quick saved. Fuck, he's dead. 
after fighting my way out of the now hostile institute, I had to now go do more side missions for the Minutemen, and while doing these I can now explain some perk choices happening off camera. Basically any time I had a perk choice I could take, I would do that, meaning if Demolitions Expert or Idiot Savant was available I took those as the primary choice, whereas if they weren't available due to level restrictions I took Toughness for damage resistance, Armor to make mods for the Power Armor, Bloody Mess for more damage, Lone Wanderer for the same reason, and lockpicking and hacking only when it was needed which was about one time apiece. But after finally doing enough side missions, I went back to the castle and outfitted it with artillery weapons, which is just insane. However, once that was finished, I had to then defend said castle from a synth invasion, and surprisingly I was losing a lot of health here. But also not surprised as I was a giant Tim man who moved slow who could only throw grenades as his only form of defense. However, after enough grenades were thrown, the synth invasion had been stopped and I could now proceed with taking the fight to the Institute. After sneaking through some sewers and summoning the Minutemen, it was time for some destruction. And if you thought it would be anything other than tons of explosions, I don't really know what you were thinking. GORILLAS! THE GORILLAS! It didn't have to come to this gorillas, you could have been on my side! Further into the institute, I came across Father Defying Gravity and then had a massive explosion party near the reactor. But after everyone was dead, I planted a bomb on the reactor and we got teleported out. Now all that was left was to do the biggest explosion in all of this game's existence. Blowing up the institute. And with that, Fallout 4 was finished again, only using explosives. The things I learned in this run will be used in any Fallout video I do in the future. It takes all the scavenging for useless junk and throws it out the window, making you a ton of money in the process and the ability to do pretty much whatever else you need. I'm glad I gave this run another try because it was so much easier this time and I had a lot of fun streaming the playthrough. If you liked this video, make sure to leave a like and comment anything else I could have done to break the game or anything you'd like to see done in the future. If you're new, make sure to subscribe for more challenges and future videos. And again, if you'd like to check out the weekend streams, make sure to check out the Twitch link in the description. As always, I've been Chris from Crisis Gaming, and I will see you on the next one.